Okay, boys and girls, DK, Mr. V Amps. We have something kind of interesting here. Um, this is the back view of a Fender Music Master Bass. It's a um, small sort of practice bass amp from 1975 based on the speaker date code. That is a, um, a CTS made speaker. It's got a 12AX7 and two 6V6s and the speaker is supposed to be 8 ohms, 12 watts. So, a practice bass amp. That's something you don't see every day. And we'll give it a flip around here. This is a... <clears throat> oh, it, I figured it had to be 70s because it does have a grounded cord on it. And there it is. <clears throat> this belongs to... Uh, a fella I know we do business and he's a real nice dude and I wanted to help him out and this one because of its simplicity and I have parts and things to service a tube amp quickly I kinda shuffled this around in the queue so uh, despite the fact that I had been totally bogged down on computers this one I don't think is gonna be a rabbit hole to dive down so we just have a volume knob and a tone knob and two inputs and an on off switch. This amp is here because it probably has not ever had maintenance or work done to it. Um, the six V6 tubes in there are made by Electro Harmonics, so those are obviously not originals. The preamp tube is an RCA, so that may very well be original, but we'll see if it's healthy and happy. Um, and we probably have some original capacitors and things like that just needing maintenance, so because this crackles and pops and makes little Rice Krispie noises, we're going to pull the chassis and do some maintenance. Okay, so we're in. Um, apparently JM signed his handiwork here. Um, Three-prong cord on this. It doesn't, that doesn't look like an aftermarket changeout, but there's still a death cap in there for somebody who might have used a two-prong plug on that. I don't know about that. Um, interesting here, this appears to be an interstage transformer for the phase inversion, because we're coming in the inputs, yep, are these separated? We're coming in the inputs, we're going through the resistors, and then the audio signal will, yeah, comes through here into the first triode yeah yeah this is this is um, this is I believe an interstage transformer for the phase inversion um, and then we're output transformers on the bottom our power transformers looking a little roasty there so uh, these capacitors have probably failed this is a double 20 that's a single 20 um, I think it's set at 350 volts or something I have a 500 volter to go in it um, <clears throat> 25 25 10 and 2. So there's some little unusual values. The other, the only film cap in here is an orange drop. And it doesn't look like any of these uh, resistors have really had the chance to to bite it. We're, we'll test them. We'll test them and see if any of them have gone way high value. But I think this is going to be due for a recap and a pot clean. And then it will be a happy amp again. Um, fortunately, I have all the caps I need in stock with the exception that I better not screw up because I only have three 20s left and I need two to replace that can and one to replace that. But other than that I think we'll be good so I'm going to recap it. I'm going to just disconnect the death cap, not do anything with it, just disconnect it. We'll take it out of there because um, I don't think we're going to need that anymore and we'll clean the controls. But yeah, we have a blue film cap up there in the tone, and we have an orange-ish film cap over here. So, I guess that's how they did it in 1975. To work. Okay, so far so good. The resistors checked out okay. Our capacitors, our big filters were all 20s. So, 20, 20, 20. Um, we had a 2525 replaced with a 2525. We had a 10 microfarad, I think it was 50 volt, that was replaced by a 10 microfarad at like 100 volt. And then we had a 
2 microfarad 50 volt that was replaced by a 2.2 microfarad 50 volt. So we're able to get all of the capacitor values almost dead on. Um, I don't think anybody makes a regular 2, do they? They always make 2.2. Close as we can get, that's perfectly fine. Um, I did remove the death cap. We're going to clean the pots and the switches and uh, test our tubes and then I think we're good. <clears throat> here's, our, here's our shameless plug. Uh, we clean the pots with Max Pro Electrical Electronics Lubricant. This stuff is great for fans and pots and lots of things and that's what we sell here so you can look for it on Reverb along with their contact cleaner. That's me. I'm the guy who sells these as a kit together. And uh, you too can have a good time cleaning your potentiometers and your amplifiers with it. It's really good stuff. Works great. And you can also use it on the switches a little bit too. Okay, so because you look like you needed it, I did get you the schematic for this uh, amplifier. So input 1 is going to parallel the 68K resistors, give you 34K, so that's going to be the louder of the two inputs. Input 2 is going to be 68K in, so that's going to be the softer of the two inputs in volume. Through the first triode, through the volume and the tone, and then to the second triode, and then through the audio transformer, that's that thing I referred to as an interstage transformer, that's going to do your phase inversion to the 6v6s. So there you go. The only modification we did was this .047 uh, capacitor they have between the uh, common lead and the chassis ground. Took that out because I I have built many an amp without those in there and I think they make more noise than they solve. So if that's if I'm wrong, we'll, you know, go back to that well and fix it. But not a tremendously high voltage amp. Um I think it's interesting that they're expecting three hundred and ninety five volts of B plus and they're running three hundred volt capacitors. That's kind of pushing your limits, isn't it, boys? You know, I would have thought at least a 400. Of course, I dropped 500s in there because that's what I had. Um, so, yeah, 525, 2 microfarad, and 10 microfarad. So, we were able to find all of the original ish capacitator volumes, or the vo values, values. Um, and we're good. Apparently, there was a later version of this that came out in the late 70s, later 70s, that had. 6 BQ5s in it, which is uh, aka EL84 tubes. Um, should have probably had similar performance. And I guess they uh, changed the reservoir caps instead of being 20s. I think they put like a 70 in there or something. Maybe give it a little more oomph. But yeah, uh, let's put her back together and see how it sounds. Okay. So we got our first bit of bad news for our fender here. Um, with the volume and tone down at nil, it's like pretty quiet. There's just almost no sound. We crank up the volume, and you crank the tone all the way up to like 10 with the treble, you should hear a little bit of noise. It's still relatively quiet, but when we tap on tubes here, power tube number one, power tube number two, here's our preamp tube. Which is too bad. That's an original 1975 RCA tube, the, probably the one that came in it from the factory. And unfortunately, it's gone noisy. Um, bummer, because it tested okay. But uh, let's try an alternate tube in that and see if it quiets it down. Yep, so I changed our vintage RCA out with a modern production tube and the microphonics have gone away. So now I can tap on any of the tubes and we don't get much noise. The preamp tubes are always a little sensitive, but I mean, we're talking, this is one tenth of the jingle jangle. So probably being a bass amp and playing bass notes, that just eventually rattled its cage a little bit too much. But, you know, if you still have a function circuit, it's, you know, it's still a useful tube, just not for audio. Drat. 
Okay, so I had to snug the speaker up a little bit just to try to quell the cabinet rattle. And the uh, speaker grill cover here is one of those that Velcro's on. So if you want to get creative and put a little bit of foam behind it, maybe to smooth it out a bit more, that would work fine. But um, And I learned my PV base here needs some new strings. exciting song but that's a song that I actually did so hopefully copyright strike won't get you you can't do nothing on YouTube man no fun takes all the fun out of it but yeah there's our music master bass um, it's uh, obviously not making the whiny noise it would do if the tube was microphonic it puts out you know a decent volume even I've only got it turned up to like three and it's adequate I mean this is this is kind of a high output bass you know it's our PV T40 love that thing but uh, you know it's I think everything's cool with it it's uh, it's working good it's not popping it's not crackling it's got the usual you know amp noises where you know you can hear the you know you can hear the noise the RF and the cable and whatever your pickups are picking up but the amp itself isn't crackling, popping, doing anything weird. Um, and uh, yeah, as far as I can tell, it's healthy. Uh, you know, the, the look and design of this kind of goes off of what anybody would think for a bass amp. Because it's got an open back, and it's got a speaker with a no dust cap, really. It's just got that little felt cover in the middle. So... It's kind of like the antithesis of what we do now to produce bass. I mean, we compare that to, you know, our big old PV bass amp sitting there. You can see our big 10, uh, 810 cabinet there, and you can see the speaker or the um, dust cap covers are two thirds the size of the speaker. And that's kind of how we produce more bass, and we use a big closed back cabinet. But, you know, the theory was a little different, and with a tube amp like this, uh, to do a closed back, I guess you had to do an Ampeg flip top, or you had to come up with some other idea, or do a head and cab, or whatever. So for a little portable practice bass amp, um, it's kind of cool. I mean, it works fine. I have no complaints with it. And that's actually what it's going back into service for. This fella keeps it around uh, to do practice and whatnot, and you can hear what you're doing just fine. So, kind of a unique instrument. I'm going to be sending it back with our bag of casualties, like I always do. All of our fallen heroes that came out of the amp, those go with it. And we're going to send the schematic back, too. And uh, the world will be a happy place. So, thanks for watching, and have a great night.